Okay, I want to talk about adding and using macros inside automated animations. I have the automatic recognition menu open here to use an example um, using the dagger field that I have set. Uh, to add a macro, we simply click the add macro button. And what you'll see right off the bat is you have some options on when to play. The first default option being concurrent with the animation. When this option is selected, the macro will run simultaneously or at the same time as all of the animations that a sending to sequencer. You can also choose a wait macro completion. And what this does, it takes the macro and it inserts it inside the animation sequence and it will essentially run the entire macro before doing anything with the rest of the sequences and the animations. Uh, third and final options being macro only with no animation. Uh, we'll use that option for this demonstration here. Uh, what that's going to do, obviously, as the name implies, it will only run the macro when you use the dagger. So when you select the input field here, uh, it's going to go ahead and auto-populate a list of all your in-game macros, and this will act as like kind of like an auto-complete function to start filtering out as you type, so you can actually select which field that you want to use. Uh, be sure that these are case sensitive when you're calling macros and additionally if you have the item macro module active if you type item macro exactly like I did there case sensitive it will run the item macro that you have stored on the item uh, when you use the item so for this test I'm going to use what I have uh, here's a logger macro simply gonna log the arguments into the dev console when you use it. Uh, for this I have the advanced macros module active. Uh, that allows you to send arguments to the macro when you run these and AA sends a lot of useful information for you much like MIDI quality of life if you're familiar with that inside the D&D 5e system. I'm going to save that so I have my dev console open up on the right and in this instance when I attack with this dagger you'll see we have some stuff logged. Uh, this sends you an array of items. Uh, array item 0 is going to be the initial workflow that initiated uh, this animation. Uh, this is d the D&D 5e system, so this is a specific system hook. Sometimes in your system it could be the chat message. Um, could be a number of things. Uh, in the s argument position 1, the second item in the array, this is all of the animation, or all the data that Automated Animations has compiled. Uh, a lot of useful stuff, a uh, lot, lot of useless stuff in here as well, but you can get stuff like the source token, which is the, the token that used the item, a list of targets, the item that was used. Uh, the workflow is also in here as well that's separately in the arg0 position. Uh, using the field over here on the menu, you can also send arguments to your macro manually. Uh, so for this instance, I mean, so there are two different ways you can do this. So I'm going to throw a couple f words in here. Go test field uh, success. Uh, if you send just uh, just some words or strings in this instance, separated by commas, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to parse those out and send them in the arguments three position as its own separate array. And you see test field and success were sent as an array. You can also create an object in here to send it to the macro. Uh, test1, uh, field2, success, sort of. As long as it is, is in strict object format, when you use this item now, you'll see that it sends and the third argument position the object with whatever you want to put in there. Um, not entirely certain what all you're going to end up throwing in there. You can probably sync some functions in there, do what you want to do, call other macros. Uh, see, so there's one other here we go. Okay, in the active effects menu, I have a macro here. We call it fade in, fade out. This just has sequencer essentially uh, simple macro to fade the, the token opacity in and out. 
So I'm gonna just gonna rename this prone. It's an easy one for me to find. We're going to only run a macro, and we have a fade in out function, our macro here. I'm not gonna worry about sending it any arguments. Um, well, I'll go ahead and log these. Let's save that macro and do the prone position. So you see it fades out. So what it did is in the first position where it normally sends the workflow for active effects, it's going to send either on or off. If the effect was applied and it's active, uh, on will be sent to the first position in this array. And when deactivates it, it will be sent as off. So you see the way, and I, I'll have some examples of this on the GitHub wiki for automated animations. A simple if statements here, and if, if arg0 equals on, essentially saying if this active effect is being applied and it's active, let's run whatever's in between here. And the same for off. Okay, so it's off, let's do this. And um, that's pretty much all there is to macros, uh, except well, one little other feature. There is the, the box right next to here. Uh, when you're using your macro or setting it, you can actually open it up pretty quickly here and just double check that it is the one that you want. Well, that'll be it for this video. Thank you very much.